Uh, and I will take the blame for that. I thought it was six o'clock start. So I was just saying to Steve, where have you been? <laughs> we don't get time to time. <laughs> well, he's, he's here and he's well ahead of time. Um, with, with your permission, I'd like to, because I've got, I have got to go to another function. Um, I'd like to take item six first, if we could, please. Tonight. Um, is that okay with you, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is the final Birkenhead Constituency Committee tonight and uh, an opportunity to say thank you to everyone who's taken part from the start. Um, I think they've had some really good positives and um, after a sort of review it's been decided to take forward neighbourhood working in a slightly different way but actually I think it will be a really good way forward. Um, a report went to Cabinet on the 10th of December and it's actually um, in your agenda item on page 7 and it outlines a new way of working and getting the basic rights of neighbourhood working and working in local ward areas with elected members and groups of residents um, to make sustainable results and, and start new projects. So it's going to all start from April 2019 and all the councillors, all the elected members will have personal budgets and there's 74,000 divided between Birkenhead wards. Uh, a formula has been to apply to each of the wards based on population and deprivation. And you can see in Appendix A, which is on page 13, how the 74K is going to be divided up. Um, you can also see that uh, all the other constituencies have the same form that's been applied. And um, Birkin House has actually got the most funding up to, for the whole constituency area because of there's more people and more and higher levels of deprivation. Mm -hmm. So that's really positive. Um, business in St James is each individual ward member will get 4,670. <coughs> Birkenhead and Tranmere will get 5,054. Clawton, 3,889. Oxton, 3,458. Prenton, 3,628. And Rock Ferry, 4,257. So this really is like a, a really good sum of money mm. and um, yeah. it's up to the members how how they want, how you want to um, put the money together, how you want to spend it, whether you want to strategically um, spend it. Mm. Um, there's, there's a lot of sort of discussion about how to take uh, that, that funding forward, whether it wants to be uh, clubbed together for bigger projects, there's, yeah. there's a, lot, a lot of potential mm. there. Mm. On page 18 there's an appendix C which is um, a suggested draft application form. Mm. It's quite um, a general application form, mm. sort of thing that we used to use for your Wirral, that type of um, small grants fund. Mm. Um, so it, it seems to, to do the job. It's um, for applications from charities, businesses, community groups, and different partners. Asks a little bit about the, the project idea. It has to fit in with supporting the local area, benefiting the local area. So it's a sort of project that you were looking at funding before. Um, it hasn't been decided yet how they're going to be promoted. It's up to up to the board members. Um, so what we'll do is we'll sit down, we'll have a workshop, we'll discuss and agree what's the best way, but we'll be using the usual ways of promotion, which will be social media. Um, we'll, we'll work with the board members to see how they want to promote it in each of their wards. Um, but again, it'll be up to the board members how frequent they want the application um, to take place, whether it be quarterly, six monthly, annually. Um, so there's a lot of scope on, on how it can be delivered. Um, in Appendix B, which is page 15, there's, there's further suggested guidance on um, frequency of applications, the criteria of the applications, how to showcase the projects, how to evaluate them and how to publicise them. Well, again, this can all be discussed, amended and refined. Um, it's sort of to give an, an idea, a guide how to go forward, but um, it's not set in stone. The neighbourhood team will facilitate, so our, our team will help um, work with all the councillors to see in each ward the types of how they want to fund, what they want to fund, how they want to communicate about the process, and, and then we'll work with the groups that, that they want to be funded. 
Mm. So again, we'll, we can sit down with um, the elected members and see exactly what how they want to do it and how, what they want us to do as well. Um, but it seems like a really exciting way forward, and mm. I think it'll work really well. So um, that's these are the suggested proposals <coughs> that have been agreed, and it just now the next step is to sit together, have a workshop, in, and sort of refine it a little bit more, and mm. how yeah. councils want it. Okay, members. Um, you, you've heard the report. It is. Uh, uh, I think it's a very good report. It, it outlines where we are at the present moment. So I think, just from the, my own point of view, Joe, just say across the six walls, we still want to carry on doing what we're doing at the present moment. But for example, uh, skips. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is comes out of that money. That, yeah. That, like for us, three thousand eight hundred. Yeah. Well, there'd be a proportion of that would come to. Yeah, and hopefully we're going to sit. George and I are going to sit down next week and see if there's any way, if there's any yeah. underspends that we can use it for those. We can top slice yeah. it for for that for those sort of activities. Mm. Anybody else got any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I think you know a, it's good news because we got yeah. a budget again. Yes. We didn't have one. We didn't have one. Uh, and mm. B, I think it's good news that it reflects poverty because you know that's what we should be about in yeah, tackling those deprivation figures so it reflects yeah. that so overall Birkenhead has come out better all right so my ward and I, I, you know if we all know Birkenhead we know the, the, the different districts have different characteristics yeah. and perhaps that allows us to reflect that but I think there should also be some commonality because there are some things that are common to all wards you know the, the, the food issue is, is certainly common to all wards I know I've got people who use facilities in Birkenhead that um, I would be more than happy to see a portion of our money go yeah. because you know it would be cheeky of me not to give you any money and then send my residents there for referrals and, and stuff yeah. like that so yeah. so clearly that commonality can still uh, yeah. still work out if we, we put our heads together yeah. but yes. I think we should have a way of touching base with each other as well somehow rather than just simply saying there's never going to be any meetings like this well we may not be as formal and it might be around a, a subject matter that, that, that we choose or a, a, a venue or location. And I think the forms should be um, available electronically at a central point. So, you know, the, we could have a, a page on the council website directing them to the Beckenhead constituency, you know, yeah, room, whatever it's going to be called. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we, don't, we don't keep all the forms. You, the public, uh, and again, one of the reasons why we've had to change, let's be frankly honest, this is very poor turnout and they've been gradually getting worse and worse as, as time's gone on. For whatever yeah. reasons, we banged our heads against the wall and tried to do that. So I think these should be had at a central point publicly accessible with a description of what it's all about. So, so people can get them and then send them in and they get referred on to the council. So a bit of admin yeah. work is done on our behalf rather than it, you know us yeah. just going out and picking. Cause uh, you know, I know I patch very well, um, but I don't know every every organisation in my patch. I don't think anybody does. Mm -hmm. I don't be truthful. There'll be little hidden gems somewhere in my in my patch that, that I don't know about, and likes of Oxton, Birkenhead, and, and all, all the other walls that, that are hit, represented here. So, so you know, and it's a chance for new organisations to start. And the other thing that uh, we've got a difficulty in our world is because. Some some organisations are exist, but they're not formal or established. So I I've got I might use a little bit of our money to actually get them established, rather than them just being a group yeah. of friends who get together. Yeah. Because if they want to receive funding, not just from us but from elsewhere, it's very difficult to receive funding without a structure, without a treasurer, without a, a an accountable body. It's going to be difficult under this system for us to say give money to a group that has a great idea. So perhaps some of our early money will be getting these organisations set up and formalised and, and making them able yeah. to bid elsewhere. So, yeah. so I, I think it's it's new. It it, it can always be re, re, reformed or, or changed as as, as it adapts. Uh, and I know all the councillors have relationships with with organisations, and there's nothing will interfere with them. And it does get over one of the other barriers. <laughs> I have to say, politically, not all wards are represented by one particular party so yeah. you know in, in, in terms of that yeah. it, it might be you know some people 
some people's political mm -hmm. viewpoints might be different and, and focus may be different based mm -hmm. on their their beliefs and you know final point is it does put the, the, the power the power not the money because it's not our money we won't, we, won't, we won't see a penny of it it does put the um, legitimacy back with the person who's been elected because whatever whichever way you describe organizations on the will or whatever the only people with a democratic Mm. Mandate and right are the ele are elected politicians. In yeah. fact, in fact, that they 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 are. You can have as many community organisations, but the democracy, the only real democracy, <coughs> is that mm. uh, ballot box. Yeah. So it gives it it it, it, it actually celebrates democracy yeah. by saying the, these people now yeah. are the conduit to helping each helping their community. So I think by and all, all in all, it should work out. I, I, you know, and I'll say now, and I think we should all make a pledge, if we're approached by someone in another ward who needs assistance and our people are using it, we'll be open-minded about spending money. It's mm. not a boundary thing, we'll try and spend the money across yeah. the boundaries. I mean, yeah. it's, it's Sorry you ever went on chairing the You're right, so no, Steve. Angie? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of what Steve said are, uh, really, I think, um, you know, it's really good news for our, for our local communities, isn't it? Or, you know, all, all different groups that do, you know, that do so much. I think it's really important we have a really good communication strategy. Um, obviously, we as ward councillors can say to our contacts and word of mouth, but I think we need something more, you know, more robust as well to um, get that, you know, to get that message out. I'm really pleased as well that we've still got that vital officer support in you Joe yeah, and, and Andy yeah. as well, you know, that um, you know, that we can come to for, for advice. You've got a lot of those contacts that you've built up over the, the years as well. So I'm really pleased that, you know, yourself and Andy are still very much um, linking in with us. And but but I would like to think a bit about the you know the, the common strategy so that you know people do do you know about this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd agree with that. I think comms is really, really absolutely. important. Um, I think some of the benefits we'll see where we particularly work closely with other wards, like I'm thinking, you know, we share a road between Claude and Bits and St James mm -hmm. wards, you know, and you're yeah. one side of the road and we're the other. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to do joint work that will <coughs> benefit for both, both wards. And, yeah. and obviously, because absolutely. you're working jointly, that should actually save money that can then be spent yeah. in other areas and yeah. the same will be said for Bergenhead and Tramia Ward where we you know where we border on yeah. on each other. So but I think the key and perhaps it will help improve, you know, the uptake, the number of residents coming to meetings, yeah. um, if it's communicated right and yeah. they feel part of that actual engagement yeah. process, yeah. I'm hoping that might improve uptake. Yeah. You're right, Pat. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's all You're good. Right, Yes, sir. Then, with this guy. So, we're just, just noting yeah. this. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those ideas can be taken on board, Joe, then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have a little yeah. 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 Just, just, be, just, just, <laughs> my point of view, you know, can I just refer you back to the minutes? Uh, can we agree with those minutes? The last person, where I suppose another. Yeah. Declaration of interest first. Sorry. Declaration of interest first. Rather than no, 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 not for me. Not for me. Oh, yeah. Unless it come up in discussion. <coughs> okay. okay. Apologies for absence. We've had a new news. Um, Jean Stapleton Centre. Apologies as well. Jean, Phil. Brian. Brian. Alan Brames of the town. Alan Brames of the town. Chris right. the Moira. Chris Moira. Uh, and Billy. Okay. Um, and then there's. I'm also sorry, uh, there'll be uh, Sam, with yeah. Sam Frost, yeah. and I'm assuming Tony and all this, and apologies as well. Okay, sorry, I will say Jill Wood. Jill Wood. Jill Wood, Jill Wood. Jill Wood. Jill Wood. Jill. Yeah, if you've yeah. yeah, she's. Yeah. She's, yeah. She's, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jill. I did she say it's a bit. Yeah. Okay, she's she's a bit apologies. Um, so. Yeah. Minutes are there.
Dave wants to do someone declare that it's a true record. It was a true record, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And any matters arising from those notes? No. I don't think so. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I will now hand over to Steve to be the Chair. Well, to Mr. Esther Mees. Thank you. Thank you. And so have the greatness <laughs> thrust upon you. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got one thing to add um, to the... To, to the yeah. Okay. Just waiting to... For, got an email uh, from Mark Smith today saying there is 28,000 uh, road safety money left because we, we had um, a subgroup and we prioritised the projects that we wanted to take forward. Um, but when they were costed out and... Um, there was also a couple of consultations which ended up with uh, people objecting. So some of the proposals from that original subgroup couldn't go forward. So that's why we've got a 28,000 um, underspend. But the, the road safety team have come up with three projects which were discussed at that workshop which they'd like to take forward. So they'd like to share that with you tonight to see if you'd be willing to, to fund them. So the first one came from um, actually from Julie uh, when we were doing hardcore clean up alleyways. Okay, on just uh, pay attention, please. Sorry. Okay, so we're, we're being asked to adopt these to spend this twenty eight thousand. Yes. Pounds. I presume it's time limited as well. If we don't do it, we exactly. may lose it. Okay. Yes. And the reason they've come up with those rather than us all having a discussion and putting new priorities is because because it's it's always difficult to take road safety projects forward because of the chance that people will be consulted and then object. Um, so these are the ones that the road safety team believe that they can definitely achieve. So that's why they've come up with those suggestions. Um, the hardcore street is one that Julie was working on and. Um, and Brian and Liz, and what it is is a, it's it's a sort of narrow road, isn't it, off Duke Street? Yeah. And um, there's yeah. a lot of cars that use it as a through sort of yeah. road. There are some play streets which I believe they don't exist anymore. Yeah, like that. The sign but it's, it's a rat road basically, and people cut through to cut off the traffic lights. And yeah. there are a lot of children on that road. Yeah. Yeah. I parked there the other day when the dry cleaners, and I parked there the other day. Yeah. That's allowed as long as you're not in the total way through the rubbish out. <laughs> so, yeah. is it, can we... Yeah, see? I mean, my, my view is, I'm happy to have a brief description on all of them, yes. but... Um, yes. Yeah, take a brief description on all of them, I'm gonna move, I'll move them from the chair on block, if, if okay. that makes life easier. Yeah. Okay. I'll second that, Steve. Yeah. Okay. So just uh, we're, we're all aware. I think we all know the, our patch, uh, the patches around Shubury Road, Palm Grove. That's the um, top, isn't it? Where it comes out just up from Williamson Art Gallery. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. suggestion of a pedestrian refuge. Seems to make a bit of sense for you. Yeah. Um, what Church Road service road, Kenton, and not anyone want it? I think that's opposite the halfway house. Ah right, okay. Yeah. Ah, no, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 everyone, members all like to agree then and get the yeah. money yeah. out there and spent. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Okay, yeah. so we'll add that for me to the, yeah. to the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, back to the agenda proper. We've done minutes, we've done actions arising. So, now I'm going to have um, a couple of presentations. And it's George, Luke, uh, and Eve. I'm going to do a joint presentation on food projects. Okay. I am blue tongue. Multi talented. They were multi talented. I'm going to do my best and use this right. Can I? Okay. Thank you. Um, and the projects which are part of it. 
Um, over summer, we did 10,000 meals for over 900 individual children. The Department of Education who funded it and asked, asked um, the UK, so all the projects across the UK, to deliver 20,000 meals. So Birkenhead alone, the six projects that we had, um, did 10,000 meals themselves, which was incredible. Um, we really recognised last summer the importance of not only good quality meals that are meeting food, school food standards and all yeah. of that, but also good quality activities that go with it as well. Um, so when we first started this, it was very much about we need to feed children that are hungry. Um, mm -hmm. And from that, we have recognised that it's not just about that. And that <coughs> we think, thank you, we don't want to put a sticking plaster on it. Oh, here we go. And this little girl's going to tie you. And 